Hi guys and gals, Shane Stevenson here, Director of Museum Collections, and welcome to 29 and 29. And what a better way than to talk about a crossing the line ceremony, equatorial baptism, uh, initiating the polywog, many names uh, regarding this uh, rite of passage, but I thought this would be a nice way of starting off the month. Right, so I've got, a, I've got the uh, PowerPoint, the rite of equatorial baptism. All right, so this tradition's beginnings are mostly lost to history. Some say it was the Vikings back in 800 and 900 AD as they were expanding out of uh, their land, uh, Norway, Sweden, uh, and heading down to England, Greenland, uh, Iceland, things like that. Some say it was the Spanish. Certainly some say it was the English. All right, so uh, definitely in the sail and wooden ship era is when this started. So if it's kind of muddied waters of the origins of the crossing the line ceremony, and certainly even back then with the Vikings, they wouldn't have crossed the line, so to speak, because they weren't hitting that far south. Uh, but originally, it can be agreed that the initiation uh, was to test the men's battle readiness uh, and to see how much they would be able to take and again, and certainly to build uh, unity among the crew, which is so important on uh, any military or a, a vessel. So all of the pictures that I'll be showing are from the USS The Sullivans and USS Little Rock. Uh, this is uh, the crossing the line ceremony for the CL-92, the Fantail. You can see uh, the crane and the uh, SC-1 Curtis Wright Seahawks that were built here in Buffalo. All right, and uh, here it looks like they're getting ready. This might be the deck part of the initiation where they're crawling around, and it looks like there's some paddles out there in the lower left of the photograph. Uh, you might be able to see some guys with some paddles. So really, this comes down to polywogs and shellbacks. Polywogs are the uninitiated, the newbies, ones that haven't crossed the equator yet. All right, the shellbacks are the trusted ones, uh, the King Neptune's man or King Neptune's men, or those initiated in the ancient order of the deep. All right, so as I show, after I show some pictures, we'll actually be going through the ceremony. There's many iterations, more than likely every ship has their own iteration of this. So I've tried to blanket it with uh, just general uh, terms of what we would see. All right, here is the USS Little Rock, uh, CL-92 on 5 November 1945. All right, again, constructed too late uh, to see any action in World War II. Spent a lot of time in the Caribbean and the Atlantic seaboard. Then it was decided that they'd head down and, and visit 19 ports in South America. So there you go. Now you have to cross the equator for that. And on the left, you might see Davy Jones there, certainly with the pirate uh, hat and it stitched or, or painted onto his back. Uh, and on the right, you have unfortunate guys that are probably ready to get paddled. So they've got big smiles on their faces. They probably didn't have smiles uh, at the end of that particular day. And then five days later, they landed and ported in uh, Rio de Janeiro. Now, this was an interesting thing. That looks like a 1940s rendition of the devil. Uh, so uh, it's actually pretty scary. <laughs> uh, but uh, let me know your thoughts on that. Is that the devil? All right, uh, reading, you know, who's in King ne Neptune's court. I uh, didn't really see much on the devil, but I, just let me know if you, who you think that might represent. And then on the right-hand side, you have what looks like a chute, uh, probably filled with garbage. Uh, and you can see some of the men are pretty dirty at that point already. Here's the Sullivans. We might have on the left uh, the royal baby. All right, I'll explain that. And then you have two guys right to his immediate left, 
uh, with the long white hair and the long white beard. Again, on the right, that looks like part of the uh, deck crawling initiation. Uh, and again, you might see those paddles, especially in the right-hand side near the garbage can. You see a guy carrying what looks like a paddle. Uh, and then even in the line, too, it looks to be uh, like a striped uh, paddle in someone's right hand. It, look, it looks like a candy cane. If you can see that. And of course, getting ready to crawl through some garbage, maybe. All right, here's again a, a guy presenting himself uh, potentially to King Neptune's court. All right, I don't know if they're clearing his mouth out with anything, but you, you get the gist of what they had to crawl through. And here's two more examples from the Sullivans. All right, here's the end result, potentially, of the initiation. And, of course, the uh, spending some time getting baptized in uh, the water, so to speak. So who would we have? Well, it's funny that they actually blend, like, Greek and Roman mythology. So King Neptune is a Roman god. Uh, Queen Amphrodite. Amphrodite is the is a greek goddess right both of the sea and the water uh davy jones uh the royal baby uh triton is a greek god uh the son of queen amphrodite and uh potentially the devil i don't know we saw that picture from the little rock again tell me what you think so for the ceremony itself uh, some vessels begin the day before the actual crossing the line ceremony called Wog Day. All right, there is a Polywog Rebellion uh, where the newbies can re can harass the shellbacks, uh, you know, mess around with their uh, lockers, uh, and also knowing in the back of their mind what will be coming in a mere 24 hours uh, from that. So it's a way for the Wogs to kind of... Uh, release uh, some tension and uh, then to get ready for uh, their ceremony and initiation the next day. As I mentioned earlier, this is really organic. Every ship probably has some iteration of this. Uh, and if you served and you crossed the line, please let us know in the comments about your initiation. It helps uh, spread the word. It helps uh, us learn. It helps other subscribers and viewers learn about what you had experienced on board. All right, so usually at the beginning of the day, the polywogs will report to either sick bay or a battle dressing station or the mess decks uh, where breakfast could be served. And it seems as though the same thing is kind of popping up, raw egg with hot sauce, all right, and maybe just raw lard as well. Uh, after that breakfast, they report to the butcher uh, where they could get uh, covered in grease, oil, water, even flour, uh, and they get their hairs cut in whatever design uh, that the butcher wishes. Certainly, as you saw, they go through a dunking pool, all right, for, as part of the baptism. It's an unholy stew, garbage, oil, water. Who else knows what's in there? <laughs> uh, then they do some sort of deck uh, ceremony, all right, where you're crawling on your hands and knees. Either you're getting paddled. I've read you're moving clothespins uh, with your noses. You've got to crawl on non-skid with bare knees and hands uh, and certainly getting whipped with a fire hose or some sort of paddle. All right, after they complete all of those initiations and those rites, they present themselves to King Neptune and his court. Uh, and then the royal baby. So usually they'll get the most rotund or the hairiest, and they put lard, grease, or oil on the stomach. And for those polywogs ready to be initiated into shellbacks, uh, they either have to kiss the stomach of the baby, right? or there's a cherry that's placed in the royal baby's belly button, and they have to suck that out with then everything else, the unholy stew, getting into their mouth as well. All right, we do have a couple uh, certificates, uh, not only certificates, but then we also have cards, as you'll see 
uh, on uh, the next slide. All right, so this was from this gentleman, Ralph Wald. He served aboard the USS West Virginia, and this was a right uh, from 1925. Now you'll see certificate cards, all right? And these were from that ceremony that we just watched on the 5th of November, 1945 for the Little Rock, all right? This was a shoemaker in uh, Leiden, all right? So now that they are initiated into the ancient order of the neat, deep, they are a trusted shellback, all right? And they carry those cards with them. All right, in addition to crossing the line or the equator, uh, there's many other certificates and initiations. Uh, the Blue Nose, if you're an order of the Blue Nose, that means you've crossed into the Arctic Circle. And even some ships, if they cross the Arctic Circle, they'll paint uh, the Bull Nose and the chalk right on the very front of the bow, blue. Uh, there's the special order of the Guinea Pig. If you were at the nuclear tests at the Bikini Atoll, uh, you were initiated into the special order of the guinea pig. Uh, frozen, oh, I'm sorry, geez, that should say frozen stiff, not frozen still. I'm sorry about that. Uh, that's if you cross the Antarctic Circle, you, you, are, you get a frozen stiff certificate. All right, sorry, my mistake. Uh, Mossback is if you cross Cape Horn. Uh, the Golden Dragon Shellback, if you cross the International Date Line. And the Royal Order of Whale Bangers, right? That's if you mistake a whale for a submarine and attack it. All right now, I have USS Croker there. I've never heard of anyone talking about the Royal Order of Whale Banger. But the Croker's first kill was a whale. I think probably the difference is here. It would seem to be, from the records, it's an unintentional kill. All right. They hit it. Of course, it stuns the whale. The props uh, run over the whale, and they even came to the deck and got out the deck guns to put out the whale out of its misery. All right, but I don't know if that qualifies to become a royal order of whale banger because it wasn't intentional. All right, this was given to uh, you know aviation squadrons, uh, things if you're bombing. Uh, from the air thinking that is a submarine and it actually turns out to be a whale, well, then you've been initiated into the Royal Order of Whale Bangers. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this little look into it. Uh, there's many societies, many groups that have initiations uh, for the newbies, uh, in this instance, the polywogs. Uh, so please, again, if you've crossed the line or you've done any of those other initiations, please leave a comment. We'd love to hear your particular story if you choose to share it. <clears throat> and uh, you know what? We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much, everybody.